Welcome to the world today. I'm the Cosmojit Khan. Today our topic of discussion is simply in one word, Afghanistan. Uh, the Afghan Taliban officials have met with their uh, U.S. officials uh, in Doha and uh, they have agreed to discuss a troop pullout. And this is for the first time we're hearing about it and uh, it's a very hopeful uh, news that's coming in. But unfortunately, the civilian deaths are also the highest ever since 2014, according to a U.N. Uh, report. Uh, civilians in Afghanistan are the ones who are facing uh, the brunt of this uh, war. Uh, unfortunately, since the election exercise is also uh, in full swing in, in Afghanistan, the parliamentary elections, uh, the Taliban have upped the ante in there as well. They've killed 22 security personnel in Afghanistan just yesterday. And uh, they've also fired across uh, into Pakistan. Pakistani and Afghan forces have exchanged fire near Chaman. We'll also talk about that. Now, to uh, talk about these things, let me introduce my guests in the studio joining me for the conversation. First of all, we have Brigadier Ahsan Ali Shah Saab with us, and joining him, we have Kamar Chima. Thank you very much, sir, for being here. Uh, sir, this is for the first time that we're hearing such a positive tone uh, emanating from the, the news about Afghanistan. Uh, now the United States have agreed to discuss the withdrawal of its troops from Afghanistan in a direct meeting with the Taliban representatives in Qatar. Uh, how do you see this process going forward? Because it is a preliminary meeting, they've discussed it, but there will be more meetings, of course. But we're hoping and we're thinking that this time maybe there is some uh, reality in these claims. Bismillah rahman rahim I think <clears throat> better late than never. The sense is prevailing. Uh, Pakistan and everybody who had some sense and is some sense now, they have been pointing out that there is no solution of Afghanistan in war. And if you fight a war, ultimately you have come to negotiating table and realize that what war brings, war brings a lot of jeopardy, a lot of destruction, uh, human killings, chaos, panic. And then when there's a government established on panic and chaos, do you, can you assure the stability of that government in future? But having said that, it is better not late than never. Now, how this thing has come to the mind of warring sides, particularly America. 17th year, now it is in process. Or they have completed 17th or 18th year since Afghanistan was invaded. 1.7 trillion US dollar has gone into this war since then. And <clears throat> now, after that, 2000 370 American soldiers, only Americans, it, it does not include you, the, the NATO soldiers, uh, they have been killed. More than 20,500 soldiers have been wounded. In 17th year of war, and the Americans are not still in occupation of even 50% of Afghanistan. More than 60% of Afghanistan is still directly control or influenced by the anti forces or anti afghan government and american government americans now after this much loss finally they have come to this conclusion that we must sit together and negotiate on the terms of taliban what was their terms and condition what were their terms and condition that we should not include the afghan government they said they have no say and they cannot decide at their own we should hold direct talks with the Americans. And in July, you, have, you must have heard this report. This Miss Alice, who is the special envoy for South Asia and Afghanistan, she held talks with the Taliban envoy in Doha, Qatar. And now there's a new series after Khalilzad, Zalmay Khalilzad has been appointed a special envoy for Afghanistan. He has held day before yesterday talks with uh, the Taliban. And Zabihullah, who is the Mujah Zabihullah Mujahid, who is the spokesman of Taliban, he has firstly confirmed that we have held direct talks with Afghanistan. On which terms and condition? That we will discuss later. Now, Zalmay Khalil Zad subsequently came to Pakistan to take Pakistani counterparts and government officials into confidence and ask their help. But I think signs are going to be well. And another thing, now when they, both the warring sides sit on the negotiating table, everyone is trying to pull their, their to pull the trigger and take more share and pre present themselves with a position of strength. If you have go gone 
through the reports inside Afghanistan. For the last one month, the aggressive posture of Taliban has gone more aggressive. Yes, sir. You have seen there in multilateral direction over, over various parts of Afghanistan. They have shown their aggression in Tahar also, in northern Afghanistan, Kandus in particular reference. They have besieged two months before Ghazni also. They have cut the, the, the main highway between Ghazni and Herat and Kabul also. And you have seen in Lashkarga, there was a political crowded crowd which was attacked. And elections are coming. Elections are is the main target. Why Americans have gone soft? It is one of their objective because American the, the Taliban government, they are targeting mostly now, they will be targeting the Afghan government if, if, if the security for uh, security personnel. All those people who are involved 5, in the election. 5,000, let me put it on record, 5,000 polling, polling stations have been earmarked and more than 60,000 Afghan forces, security forces are required to guard those polling stations. And they are the soft targets because each polling station will be not more than three to four Afghan soldiers. And where the Afghan Taliban can gather and co can collect more strength, they will attack easily. They will present a very soft target to them. Now, these are some of the, and in 60% of the area where Taliban are in control, do you think that elections can be held smoothly, which can claim legitimacy later on? So these are some of the affairs which are inviting and compelling the Americans that we should go on the terms of Taliban. Uh, absolutely, sir. And that's how it seems that the uh, chessboard is now moving. Uh, Chima Saab, uh, one of the um, contentions that many analysts uh, have uh, spoken about is that the Americans will never leave Afghanistan. They don't intend to leave Afghanistan. But here, for the first time, we're listening to the willingness of the Americans to complete for a complete pullout out of Afghanistan, complete troop withdrawal we're talking about here, which they were not even willing to discuss earlier. So what does that indicate to you? Well, I think if you just look at the mindset of the Trump administration, that might be true because the Trump administration actually believes that there must not be any liability on, uh, on America and Afghanistan has been a war of liability. And a recent Pew poll, if you have gone through that, uh, uh, you know, majority of the people in uh, United States, they themselves believe that this is a prolonged war and had this has brought nothing to the United States uh, except, you know, disrespect. Uh, and many of the Americans even don't know that we are in war in Afghanistan. So that is the, the majority or that is the level of awareness, awareness there. Uh, so I think the Trump administration believes that this is a sort of a liability so let's end this liability but remember what I believe in the, that much of the policies that are being run in uh, United States in, or in Washington in the White House there is a huge influence of the Pentagon and I personally don't believe that the Pentagon will leave Afghanistan uh, it's not just uh, as we were discussing before that uh, uh, the you know the Americans are in Afghanistan for the Chinese or the, for the Russians or for these things I think that may be the one case and that may not be that much stronger case uh, uh, because they have uh, they are, they're, they're trying to encircle China from India from Asia Pacific and from other means but I think uh, the American if you just look at the security establishments mindset they don't like they don't like to leave the places uh, where they have uh, uh, lived there and you know just giving it a free hand to Taliban this is beyond expectations uh, and I think Pakistan has been asking time and again to Americans do not consider this option you know serious option <clears throat> even in this situation what will happen the Afghan authorities will lose the ground it will be the Taliban that will be controlling the rest of the 30 percent or 40 percent of Afghanistan. And then there will be a mess again or there will be the, the neighboring countries will be in trouble as well. We will be in a trouble. Although uh, uh, the Americans or some of the Pakistani quarters believe that we have good relations with the Taliban. Uh, but uh, there are chances that there will be chaos, a civil war in Afghanistan. So if there is any peace in Afghanistan, if there is any stability in Afghanistan, uh, and that is because of the pressure of the United States, that would be the biggest mistake of the last 18, 17 years of the Americans to completely leave it. But Chima Saab, you're, you're saying something as if there is uh, some semblance of uh, some uh, you know, strategic balance happening in Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan is already in chaos. Afghanistan is in war. People are dying every day. So what, what are you talking about in this sense? Sir, so, so what I have spoken is that even if the Trump administration thinks of that, 
the security establishment is which is, has always been taking the the decisions in in in, uh, in pentagon and much of the decisions what so far has been but taken there's no the stability in afghanistan chima saab uh, let me bring this question which is further uh, in not just the withdrawal of the american troops that is the main issue with the taliban and the americans uh, they're also talking about uh, lifting sanctions on Taliban fighters. They're talking about uh, releasing their fighters that are held in Afghanistan. And they're also talking about the establishment of a political office. Now, this is where it becomes interesting that when the Taliban now want a recognition as a political force in Afghanistan, obviously we're talking about a negotiation in which the terms are settled between the Afghan government as well as the Taliban. So that is something very hopeful, sir. If, if you, you remember, if you remember, what were the objectives when the Americans came to Afghanistan? It was, uh, they were demanding the uh, our Taliban government at that time to hand over Osama bin Laden. And since they said, no, we will not hand, it over, hand over to you, Osama bin Laden, because he's our guest. So they, then they found a cause also to came. Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, to eliminate Al-Qaeda from Afghanistan. So that was the, this was the main cause for which the American government decided to come and invade Afghanistan. And in this, the Taliban regime also was changed. When Taliban regime was changed, now they were saying that now it is not the time to get back from Afghanistan, to uh, have exodus from Afghanistan, because then the Taliban were dethroned and Northern Alliance had come into the, 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 the government. Now, there was a war between the two sides, north and south. And in other words, it was the Persian speaking and the Pashto speaking. This was a divide. Both of these groups were fighting against each other. And Americans were on the side of the Persian speaking people. But majority was the, the Pashto speaking people who were bordering this Iran, uh, the Pakistan, and this area. We are having 26 kilometers of border with them. And the tribe Pashto speaking are living across the border. Now, what happened after that? After 17th year, in this process, Osama bin Laden has also been eliminated. eliminated. Uh, uh, Al-Qaeda has, Al -Qaeda been, has decimated. been eliminated also. They have been reduced to nothingness at the moment now. But there is another element which has gone come into Afghanistan. IS. And that is, I, that is um, uh, uh, Daesh. Daesh. Now, the strategy or the aim or the agenda of Daesh is worldwide. But where the Taliban are having no designs worldwide, because now they are in good terms with Russia also, and they left that idea to, ex, to have exodus or expo, export the, the, the Taliban side of revolution, Islamic revolution, into Central Asia. Now they are in good terms with China also, and they left that idea to, ex, to export their term, their, 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 their term of Islamic revolution or their their clout of Islamic revolution into Kashgar. They are in good terms with Iran also. They are not fighting with Ali Tashi Iran now. And they are to some extent in good terms with Pakistan also. So regionally Taliban have gained because they have reduced their aims and objective. And Americas have, America, Americans have lost in terms, of, in terms of money also, in terms of manpower also. And another, another thing is the legitimacy to come to Afghanistan has also been uh, equalized and it has been marginalized because Osama bin Laden is no more there, Al-Qaeda is no more there, but because of the mayhem and panic inside Afghanistan, another term of the, uh, the, this thing has come, Daesh has come into Afghanistan and now Afghanistan is, if that the, that the matter is not decided earlier, there will be another sort of series of battles inside Afghanistan between Taliban and Al-Qaeda for the saddle of Kabul. And, and beyond that, sir, there, there doesn't seem to be any end game in sight for the Americans. What exactly are they now trying to achieve in Afghanistan? So for that matter, they also, I think, are going to do a cost-benefit analysis and see whether staying in Afghanistan is going to be uh, beneficial for the Americans. And it seems that it's not going to be, and there is no reason for the Americans to be there. If you ask an American soldier, what is he doing in Afghanistan? The answer is, I don't know. Chimasa, would you like to comment on that? Sir, sir what I believe is that uh, there has always been a policy that comes from the, from the Congress or the White House, or there is a policy that comes from the Pentagon. And remember, sir, uh, 
it is the CIA or the Pentagon that has heavily influenced the White House and the Congress as far as whatever has been done in Afghanistan. So I believe that the only reason, the only way the Americans can leave Afghanistan is that they make Taliban part of the Afghan government. And you know, this is what the Taliban have demanded as well, that if there is an inclusive government, this is the demand, one of the demands of the Taliban. If there is an inclusive government, in that inclusive government, we can let even the Americans to train us. This is what the Taliban has been saying. Now, the point is that in this situation, if the Americans stay there, that will be an inclusive government. Americans, if leave, there is a complete chaos. Americans can leave on these terms. Now, the question is that elections are coming. And if folks, and you know, it's not possible in two months there is going to be a deal between all the parties. Now, after the elections, how to make them the part of the process? So but we, we, we have a big question mark on the elections themselves, Shima Saab, because the way the uh, Afghan Taliban have announced it, that they are targeting these elections, they have said that we will leave no stone unturned into making this election process a complete fiasco and a failure. And I think the Americans are seeing that happening on the ground. That because is... They, they, they just killed 22 people, including uh, the head of the police, uh, 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 head police officer, and among them, 20 other soldiers. That, that. And, and in addition to that, five so far, I think five to six, the candidates also who are holding elections. Yes, sir. They have also five been gunned down. Five to six have been killed. Yes. And I, that was, if just look at when the people was getting themselves enrolled for the elections or, or for the ID cards, at those times it was the Islamic State that was targeting them. And, and uh, the Taliban actively said that we are not behind these civilian casualties. We are not sponsoring. We are not behind all these casualties or the attacks on the Afghan people. So Taliban sidelined themselves and distanced themselves from any attack that is on a civilian. So I believe uh, that it will be tough for them <laughs> if they attack the civilians in Afghanistan. They have, been, they have distanced themselves. Whenever there was an attack from Islamic State, or for example, if there was a sectarian attack in Afghanistan on the mosque, on Shiites and Afghan authorities, it but, was all fine. But Taliban also distanced themselves from those sectarian attacks as well. So this is what I'm saying. So they distanced themselves from sectarian attacks, from the attacks on the public. So if they have distanced them in the past, I believe... Uh, so they have declared their, their uh, targets. They have said that all those who are involved in the election process, all those who are supporting the election process in terms of security or any other way, they are the targets. So, so, so they're targeting the Afghan government, not so the people. People. So in this situation... But what the unfortunate fact of the matter is that in the crossfire, in collateral damage, it is exactly the people that people are facing the brunt that. of this war. They're the ones who are dying. So I, I think I'll agree with the, the colleague. Now, now let's discuss this point also, that if Taliban is not reducing their demands, their demands so far, I will disagree with him on this issue, that they are, Americans are discussing phased-wise withdrawal from, from Afghanistan. Absolutely, sir. And they say that we will give you some share in, in the government before we, 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 we withdraw. Talibans are insisting on this point that there should be zero presence of American inside Afghanistan. Troops. Zero presence of troops. Absolutely. This is number one. Absolutely. Number two, they say, we do not want any share. We want the government because we are in majority. And if, if you see on ground, they are holding 60% of the area. So we'll come and to they're that. they're in majority also. Sir, if you we'll also come to that. The but but, but now no, I'm coming. Let me explain my point. So That if Taliban are not losing the ground, if Taliban are not re reducing their demand, and Americans are not agreeing to what Americans are saying. What is the middle point? Where's the what is the meeting point? The meeting point is that Taliban should realize that the, there is a share of the Northern Alliance. They have suffered also, and they have been gainers or losers, whatever they are in war, but they are partners inside Afghanistan. They are inhabitants of Afghanistan. And Taliban should go for proportion. And I think I will, I will also not support the abrupt withdrawal by Americans from Afghanistan. Because if you remember, when they did in the post-Soviet withdrawal. In Iraq. And, uh, no, also, no, no, no. Also inside in Iraq. Afghanistan. Yeah. When they did it inside Afghanistan, when the Soviet withdrew after post-1979. So when the Taliban you, took over. You, you could see the bloodshed. You could see the chaos and Taliban fighting inside, north against south, south against north, and Northern Alliance came into being. The Seventh Party Alliance 
bifurcated. It got disturbed and started fighting inside. They went to Hanakaba with the Prime Minister of Pakistan. There they took oath. But even then when they came back on, they were again on the battlefield and bleeding themselves inside Afghanistan. The same thing will happen again if there is an abrupt withdrawal from Afghanistan. So American and Taliban must meet together and avoid this kind of panic that who will rule Afghanistan? Because if you leave, Northern Alliance will not uh, accept it. If you stay, Taliban are not accepting it. But Americans have to guide them and give equal share, our share to the population, to the proportion of population to each side. Or rather install a true democracy in, yes. uh, in Afghanistan, which is what we want to see there. But uh, as far as Mr. Uh, Abdul Salam Zaif, the former ambassador to Pakistan from Afghanistan is concerned, he says that it is only a matter of time now. The only thing that's required is a timeline for the implementation of this tacit agreement that has been reached or an understanding that has been reached, which says that the Americans will need to pull out of Afghanistan for there to be a reconciliation process that needs to be initiated in Afghanistan. How do you see that, sir? Mm -hmm. and, and Ashraf Ghani has also repeatedly asked the Taliban to join the government and has, uh, you know, stretched his hand forward to meet the Afghan uh, Taliban, but uh, uh, not the you, same response. I tell you, Afghans have a tragic past, and they are suffering through traumas and traumas. Uh, since Soviet withdrawal, in early 80s and 90s, uh, and in 80s, 80, 1888, and then you see when the Soviet came inside Afghanistan in 1978, the Afghans were fighting. And then when they left, Afghans were fighting. And when the American came, Afghans are fighting. I think more than almost even 40 years now, we are completing 40 years that Afghans have been fighting and their blood is being oozing. It is a high time for Afghans to realize that peace is the only solution inside Afghanistan. Peace is the only objective. Peace should be the only target. Either if it comes through Americans, if it comes through Russian, it comes through even Chinese, they must accept and welcome peace. That is the target and central idea. And it should not be the central idea and central target of only Afghan, the region also. If Afghanistan is not stable, Pakistan cannot be the stability of Pakistan cannot be assured. The stability even in India cannot be assured. The stability in the region cannot be assured because the Chinese parts are in disturbance. Central Asians are in disturbance. Iran inside can be in disturbance. Pakistan is already suffering from through. But Americans, I think, if they are competing with China economically, China is emerging economically. Russia is reasserting. Pakistan has not lost its importance with every day passing. Pakistan is gaining its importance, but, but the fault lies where it is the American prism. America is looking to Pakistan through the prism of Afghanistan government and Indians. And I think this prism should be removed and the importance of Pakistan, not only in Afghanistan, in the regional affairs, the importance of Pakistan should be realized and Pakistan should be taken, in, in, taken into confidence that what maximum part Pakistan can play in settlement of the Afghan dispute. Well, taking a leaf out of that, sir, uh, the uh, Mr. Zalmay Khalilzad, after his meeting with the Afghan Taliban in Doha, then later on went uh, to see uh, uh, the uh, authorities in, in the Gulf countries, in Saudi Arabia and other countries as well. He's making his tours and trying to uh, muster support for the uh, reconciliation process that we are now all hoping that we will see uh, take place in Afghanistan. Uh, but there's also the realization by the Americans that they are not winning this war in Afghanistan. In fact, they, as we talked about it earlier, they are uh, at a massive loss. And they need to cut their losses and get out of that bad situation. Don't you agree with that uh, contention as well? You know, sir, uh, you know, uh, earlier, Brigadier Sir, was, as he was mentioning about my point, I think if you just look at the letter which the Taliban have written to American Congress, they actually believe that there should be inclusive government. There is no way other than inclusive government all have to share that point. And remember one thing, that will happen in the presence of the United States. If we believe that the Americans will accept this point of the Taliban that, okay, you just shared power, all of you, and we are leaving, 
completely, that won't happen. That is not the shape of Afghanistan which you will see. And no regional ally will believe on it. You just can't, can't give, you know, uh, an unruling Afghanistan, a, a, a country that has always been in chaos, uh, to, to all the warring parties and you can leave. It can't happen. Even the Taliban have accepted that. The point is that, in which, what we have to understand is that, all what the Americans want is Taliban to share the power. How they want, how they share the power, that is to be decided. As he was mentioning, the Northern Alliance people, you know, Abdullah Abdullah, the Ashraf Ghani, how they believe that we have to include the Taliban. That is that formula is to be decided. But there is no formula under consideration where you see that the Americans will leave Afghanistan, even if that negotiations happen, even if the Afghans come in the government. All what the Taliban have agreed to the point is even train us as well. Yes, you know, know, sir, but we are missing the point here. What we're talking about is the removal or the withdrawal of American boots. That's the American troops. I mean, it's, 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 it's very much possible that the Americans have a, 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 a diplomatic presence in Afghanistan in the form of an embassy, as they do in many other countries. Sir, but they will not have troops stationed in Afghanistan, and sir, that is the is real point of contention. It is not actually possible. If you look at from the Pentagon's mindset, if you look at from the military mindset, you know, we call it that there is a militarization of diplomacy. There is no diplomacy yet. There is no diplomacy of the diplomatic toolbox in Afghanistan. It's only the CIA, it's only the Pentagon that deals. So in this situation, what I have been pressing here and what I have been uh, uh, learning from understanding from the American and from the Taliban's perspective, Whatever that has to happen in Afghanistan, that will happen in the presence of the Americans. The Americans will not leave after, even after the settlement, if they, they will lose, uh, they will remove, they will, they will uh, lower their uh, presence in terms of activity because uh, they all, all the, the belief is that we have to deal with the Islamic State. And remember one thing. All but so we've also spoken point. about this earlier, Chima, sir, sir, that, sir, that the only uh, sir, credible uh, defense against the Daesh or IS is the Taliban. Taliban. It's not, so, so, sir, so, so it's not the Americans. I can tell no, you that. No, 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 sir. I think Americans won't leave this way. Americans will keep this one of the point to stay in Afghanistan. So they, they definitely they need the Taliban to deal with the Islamic State, but the Americans will stay uh, in Afghanistan for the Islamic State as well and for keep a check on the others as well. Well, there is also many who believe that if uh, the Americans were to completely withdraw their troops from uh, Afghanistan, it would Afghanistan would fall back into civil war and chaos. That there is, is no one of the understanding. Either. Now, you're saying that that's obvious, but not many agree with that because lots of people are now hoping and thinking that there might be a political solution there in negotiation. Is... We're hoping and we're, we're uh, hoping that we see that uh, concept come to fruition. That there is a negotiated peace in Afghanistan. Why can it not happen, sir? Would you like to comment? I think uh, the economy of Afghanistan has gone into such, uh, through so many phases. And there is a war economy inside Afghanistan. As I have told you, now actual war and inside fighting has occurred for the last 40 years against the foreigners. But before also there were Afghan wars, Anglo-Afghan wars, Russian wars and these and this and that. The psyche of Afghan, Afghan people, they blossom when they are fighting against each other. There's something. Uh, the history has shown it. And they, 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 they have adopted this as their second nature, that we can prosper when we fight. Because the tribes are there, the, the ethnic problems are there, then the al Tashi and al Sunnat problems are there. And the, so this, this, this thing is there. It is in their nature to fight against each other. But they are very, because of their very independent nature, uh, I, I have told uh, this pro these programs also, that if you remember, King Zahir Shah was ruling Afghanistan. But if he was to go to Helmand, he used to ask permission from the governor of Helmand, that I am coming to your area, are you comfortable? Because people who are on ground there, the defense minister is always very powerful there. Because he hold people with him. He hold forces with him. So whoever are holding forces inside Afghanistan, they are powerful. Now, coming to my point, which you are asking, at the moment, there are more number of people behind Taliban because population-wise, they are in majority. This is number one. Number two, because their, their cause is just. Their cause is just in a way that they, their agenda is inside Afghanistan. It is not outside Afghanistan. And all the regional powers are supporting them. You see their relations with Russia, you see their relation with China. And now, because of the problem 
which is almost eliminated inside Pakistan. Pakistan is also not in bad term with Taliban. Per per perception wise, and you see that there's no problem in Pakistan from one side, from Taliban's. So a, a Taliban have gained. Now when this has happened, Taliban have occupied more space inside Afghanistan territory wise and perception wise also. That has brought the, the Americans to realize to this point that there is to be some negotiated settlement. But this settlement, if the elections, the, the, the one option, the Taliban can also be asked to participate in the election. But then they say that since Northern Allies is in power and Ashraf Ghani is just a puppet, we cannot participate under the under this stooge government. And then they say that when there are no foreign troops in Afghanistan, we will participate in, in this election. If Americans can compel or can satisfy the Taliban to participate in the election on their terms, it, is, it, should, it will be a very good option for the solution of Afghanistan. I think that is a very possible and plausible situation which can... So some political analysts also believe that uh, a long-term international support and power-sharing agreement between the Taliban and the Afghan government is necessary to end the war and that the U.S. has tried every single method, policy and strategy to limit the Afghan war and instead it has actually grown more in scope rather than being limited in any way. Uh, the Taliban have more con land in their control in the country and uh, even though increasing the number of troops from 8,000 to 14,000 has actually backfired for the Americans. So the Americans are losing the battle in Afghanistan. That is something which is quite clearly written on the wall now. I think everybody accepts that. Now we have to move forward from this point. And if the moral uh, superiority of the cause that the Taliban are fighting, which is foreign occupation, th that is an accepted cause in, by any stretch of the imagination in any international forum. So they have a legitimate fight that they're fighting. Americans don't. So they don't see themselves in Afghanistan. The only f way forward for the Americans is in finding a peaceful solution to the Afghan conflict. And I think now this time the Americans are very serious about it. I hope and I pray that it actually leads to what we are hoping for. What do you think about that? Do you think that this is a, 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 a picture which can become reality? Well, I think there is a possibility of that. But I think one thing we will have to understand that uh, the Afghan institutions are not that mature. Uh, for example, if you have to bring all parties on <laughs> table, that has to be some sort of a domestic internal uh, compatibility. For example, if you just look at the Taliban, the Taliban have yet to make a political party. They have yet to understand the political process. Mm. They have yet to understand what is the presidential system. They have been living in, you know, in that medieval setup and they have never had that the political setup and they have never ruled it uh, through. They have never came through that prism. So you have to actually make them understand and you have to give them the time that if you really want to come through this election process, you need to learn and you need to engage and you need to educate those people and mm. they can ask and they can demand time for that if you look at from the Taliban's perspective. And I think that's where the international community comes in and they need to come and play their role as well. We'll talk about that after this short break, Chima Sab. So we need to take a short break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back after the break. We're in conversation with uh, Brigadier Asan Ali Shah and Mr. Kamar Chima regarding the Afghan situation. Uh, Chima Saab, let's continue from where we left off, and that was the role of the international community that now has to come in if we find that we are moving towards a peaceful resolution of the Afghan conflict, because we can't just leave, or the Americans can't take all the onus for whatever happens in Afghanistan post the negotiated uh, peace. So every uh, regional partner has to uh, put in their uh, efforts in stabilizing the Afghan economy and helping to rebuild Afghanistan, which I think is also a very important part. And I think Pakistan will have a major role to play when it comes to the Afghan reconstruction and rebuilding, sir. What do you think about that? <clears throat> I think uh, Pakistan is very relevant to the problem. Pakistan is the major beneficiary if peace comes inside Afghanistan because it will increase uh, 
a happiness inside Pakistan also. And it will bring stability inside Pakistan. Because if the destabilization of Afghanistan is prolonged, Pakistan will remain destabilized. Now, how Pakistan can gain from a peaceful Afghanistan? And how Pakistan can help them in a peaceful Afghanistan? These are two different questions. Pakistan, uh, Americans are of the belief that Taliban are in full control of Pakistan. And I think they are missing this channel, this link, that they are not. Afghanis are very independent nations. We have discussed it earlier. There was a trust. At the trust level at some time was very high, and then it came very down because you handed over Mullah Abdul Salam Zaif, who was the ambassador against the diplomatic norms and condition to America. There, from there, the trust level is coming down. Then the, the, the Taliban head was killed inside Pakistan in Quetta, who was coming from Iran. Then the Pakistani side of Taliban, Hakimullah Masood, who had links with the Afghanistan, Afghan, he was killed when he was coming for negotiations. So these are some of the turning points which has reduced the trust level between Pakistan and Afghanistan. So Taliban are now under the complete influence of Pakistan and we cannot compel them being independent nations who are fighting for their own cause and independence against inside and outside both. So this, this perception is totally wrong. However, Pakistan can be instrumental in using their leverages against Taliban and compel them to sit and talk with Afghan government and Americans. This is number one. Number two, since Pakistan has historical links with the southern Afghanistan, which include Nangar, Paktia, Paktika, and Badakhsha, and Taha, all these provinces are linked link Pakistan. And those tribes, some of the tribes are living across. So traditionally, Pakistan can have influence on the local governors and those who are pro-Taliban uh, to sit and bring uh, sit on the negotiation. This is number two. Three thing is that most of the Afghans, they are having their businesses inside Pakistan. And so far, Pakistan is demanding from Afghanistan also that create such a condition inside Afghanistan through which there should be a respectable way in which these Taliban, these, refu these refugees, 2.5 million refugees can get back to Afghanistan respectfully. So all these things that through economically, business-wise, through tribe, tribe, uh, tribe norms-wise, tribal norms-wise, and then the other influences on uh, Taliban, Pakistan can ask them to sit on the negotiating table and then ensure that these negotiation should continue to a conclusion, to a, conclu to a concluding end. Absolutely. And the sir. third is Pakistan can host these negotiations. Pakistan has been hosting these negotiations for Afghanis, for intra afghan dialogue, and Taliban and Americans also. Pakistan can play the role of a facilitator, host, which we've facilitator, already said, sir. Which we are already doing. But unfortunately, sir, uh, unfortunately in Chaman, uh, the uh, 60 kilometers north of the border town of Chaman, uh, there was a exchange of fire between Pakistani and Afghan troops. And again, it is the same old issue when Pakistani forces were fencing the border, which we have said that we are going to do. Uh, there were, that uh, team of uh, army soldiers came under attack while they were uh, fencing the border. And that attack continued for five hours. There was a proper gun battle raging on for five, that went on for five hours. So that is something very unfortunate. And we don't want to see uh, this kind of uh, provocation emanating from Afghanistan. Uh, Chima Saab, I'd first I'd like to ask you your comments on this uh, situation and then, of course, Brigadier Saab. Sir, uh, I have met uh, certain people who have visited that uh, when there was a fencing going on on the Pak Afghan border. Uh, I think all those people who have come back, the journalists and other analysts who have come back from the border, they have been saying that the situation is very tough. Uh, those who are installing that wire, they have to first, you know, uh, uh, you know have that steel bars so that we just are not shot by the shooter 
or by the sniper because that has been we have been facing all that uh, the point is that Pakistan and Afghanistan definitely they contest on the border it is you know it is yet to be decided the Afghans don't accept this Duran line whatever the perspective has been of, of, uh, of Afghanistan government that is not and Pakistan's perspective it is not in line with each other so I think and above all Pakistan has failed to make to the international community that if we are fencing here in the border, then we need international community and Afghanistan support that. Now we are this we are this fencing this border just on our own. One financially, second at the cost of our security, third at the cost of the law enforcement. You know, uh, risk that is at, on the border. There is no trade even at the border now, or there is no uh, people to people contacts at the border. So I think uh, Pakistan need to have a, you know need to raise these points uh, internationally. Uh, I think we are talking much on Afghan India, but we are not talking that what are our bilateral issues with Afghanistan and what are the challenges we have to face at fencing, you know. Shima Saab, another big question would emerge if the Americans did pull out completely and withdrew all their troops, would we need the fence still? <laughs> That's another question. Sir, very briefly, if you would like to answer yes, that because uh, we're out of time. I, I'll just give you that uh, how this fencing started. It started in 19, 2000, in 2006. Those are Che. It started from there. We have 13 kilometer, more than 1300 kilometer border in Balochistan and more than 1200 kilometer border with KP. KP. Now, Pakistan started this phase wise. In phase one, three agencies in KP were taken Maman, Bajawar, and Khaybar. And you, you see that what is, the, what is the exchange of people? 50 to 60,000 of people daily come across the border. And in that traffic, more than 90 percent, more than 90 percent, they come towards Pakistan. So this is the background. This is number one. So very quickly, now, because we're out of time. Now, Pakistan is fencing the border because of the two, three reasons. Number one, that the Americans and Talib Afghan governments are blaming that there so is. We know the, the, the background, know, sir. So if we know the, if you know the background, that Pakistan, I think, should go on the international level. And then but the question is, sir, point. if the Americans were to pull out hypothetically tomorrow and there were no American troops in Afghanistan, would we still need the fence? Yes, I think we will. Well, okay, sir, we, we leave will. it at that. We yes. leave it because this, can, uh, this conversation it. is going to continue for some time now. Because there are two th reasons. Sir. One, terrorist and then smuggling. These are the two, two main reasons. So this needs to be done irrespective of whether the Americans oh, yes, leave whether Afghanistan the Americans are there or, or not. not. Well, we need a border mechanism and border management mechanism with Afghanistan. And this is one of that. Absolutely. This is part sir. of that. Absolutely. If they accept the border. Well, thank you very much, sir, for taking out the time and sharing your views with PTV World. Of course, this is an ongoing conversation, and we'll be talking about this issue in our coming programs as well. But thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you heard you. the conversation, and as always, we say, please draw your own conclusions from what you heard. But uh, what we've been looking at in the press, uh, it all seems very hopeful, and we pray that we see peace in Afghanistan sooner rather than later. On that note, it's goodbye. life book is hope uh, that's the message that North Koreans give them so I don't know what message the South Korean has brought for them but Iran may also give them a message you know what has happened to them over the nuclear deal I mean that that that's also a real-time lesson for the rest of the countries I mean Americans they the way they have scrapped that entire development uh, I and mean, then that was again a, a big breakthrough Indeed. You know, after 40 years you know, of Iranian revolution, that was a thumping achievement. I, I believe that was perhaps Obama's, you know, most tremendous achievement. And like you, like she said, I mean... I think the yeah. Paris Climate Accord was far more significant, but... Yeah. Well, more, more significant for our children, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll leave it at that, sir. Of, Thank yeah. you very much Thank for taking you. out the time and sharing your views with PTV World. Well, you heard the conversation, and as always, we like to say, please draw your own conclusions from what you've heard. On that note, it's goodbye.